Good evening. This is Pastor Barbara, a.k.a. Preacher with Parrots, a.k.a. Hermana Barbarita, a.k.a. a lot of things. Today is September 4th, 2014, and we're beginning our third video in the series of the Book of Acts. We ended our previous video with verse 14 of Acts chapter 1. These, having just mentioned the name of the apostles, all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. I wanted to comment a little bit about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren, because the subject comes up from time to time. Uh, it did in, um, in the, the Gospels in Mark 3, John 2, where Mary and Jesus' brethren uh, were present. In fact, Mary wanted him to do a more public miracle. And we have Matthew 12 and Luke 8. In John 7, we have an indication that Jesus' brothers did not believe in him as Messiah, as the promised one. From time to time, you will hear comments on just who is the Bible referring to when it mentions Jesus' brethren. There are those who believe and the phrase is, in English, ever virgin, that Mary remained a virgin after Jesus' birth. In fact, she was and is still a perpetual virgin. So if that's the case, then who are the people being referred to as the brethren of Jesus? There are those who believe that, that Joseph may have been married before and had children, and that Mary simply assisted in the raising of these children. There are others who know much more about the Aramaic language and New Testament Greek language than I do, that say that the word brethren can also be used along with the word cousins. There are some, uh, there are some Catholic theologians that I know of that I uh, deeply respect their exegesis of the word of God. And they suggest that that could be anybody in, in a group that uh, Jesus was with a lot or raised a lot with. Um, we will be hearing about James as we get into the book of Acts. When he writes his epistle, he is referred to as James, the brother of our Lord. He's also referred to as the brother of Jude, who wrote the book of Jude. So let's see whether these might be the actual half-brothers of Jesus or not. First of all, does it make a difference? It doesn't make a difference in our salvation. It was prophesied. And that prophecy was fulfilled that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Whether Mary had children after that has nothing to do with the prophecies of Messiah or the fulfillment of the same. There are some religious leaders 
Martin Luther, John Wesley, and many Catholics who believe that Mary was ever virgin. I don't happen to agree with them. If you've ever been a viewer or a listener of mine before, you know that I'm a strong believer in letting the Bible interpret the Bible. And while I could mention many scriptures, there's one in particular that I think makes it pretty clear that Mary uh, did not remain a virgin. Um, let me read a couple of them. Um, let me read, first of all, this is the Holman edition um, of the Christian Standard Bible. When the angel spoke to Joseph and told Joseph that it was all right to take Mary as his wife, um, he woke up and we have his answer or we have what follows in Matthew 1 24 uh, you know let me back up a little bit to get the whole story I won't do this for all the editions that I read but let me back up on this one but after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him, that's speaking of Joseph, in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill, which was spoken by the Lord uh, through the prophet, and this is the prophecy. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Here's the verse. When Joseph got up from sleeping, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her, but did not know her intimately until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. So Joseph did not know her intimately until after the birth of a son. Let me read from Philip's translation, a version that I took with me right after the Six-Day War in 67 when I went to Jerusalem. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had told him. He married Mary, but had no intercourse with her until she had given birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Uh, let me read from the international version version I just about the time I said that I was looking at the word version the one who used scholars those with linguistic abilities and so forth from all or most major Christian denominations when Joseph woke up he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name of Jesus. Now, one more, and then I want to mention three Catholic versions. This is from the New 
Living Testament. Now, the Living Bible is not a translation into English from Hebrew and Greek. Rather, it's a translation of English to English. And if you think that language doesn't change, uh, I was going to say from generation to generation, but it can change within a generation. There's language that's changed a great deal in my lifetime, and I'm in my 80s. Uh, uh, I used to use the word partner when Sister Rose and I entered the evangelistic ministry because it was at the time of a lot of uh, discrimination. Uh, in many places, she was called the Mexican, and I was referred to as the American. There was discrimination. There were places she couldn't go in. There was also a type of reverse discrimination. There were people that said, well, blue eyes. American. Obviously, I was rich. Without question, my parents were uh, paying for all the expenses of our evangelistic crusades. Uh, we worked really hard at presenting ourselves to people as being equal. And in those days, to us, that meant partner. That is not a term I would use today in referring to another woman because the word partner now uh, has retained the same meaning, but in some areas it has changed. So language changes. Uh, so perhaps there was a need for uh, an English translation into a more up-to-date English translation. This is the newer version of that. And it says, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born and Joseph named him Jesus. Now, let me go to three um, Catholic versions. Um, this one the way the Catholic Living Bible an illustrated version oops, the Catholic Living Bible I got this in a thrift store uh, in the Carrollhead where I live and um, the lady who sold it to me said her daughter had used not this exact Bible, but the same version in catechism here on the mountain. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel commanded and brought Mary home to be his wife. But she remained a virgin until her son was born and Joseph named him Jesus. I want to make one reference to a Bible I don't have here with me. It is the night is the eighteen ninety nine printing of the Dure Reims Bible of the Catholic Church. And it said Joseph did not know her until after the birth of her son. And finally, the only version that I have here, and you see behind me, people ask me about all those books on the organ bench. I have about 50 Bibles, different versions, different languages, um, and so forth. Um, this is the Christian Community Bible, the Catholic Pastoral Edition. And this uh, particular printing 
it explains something that um, all Catholics know and some Protestants know. It starts out with Jesus is risen and then it speaks about the Bible and tradition. Um, if you look at the statement of faith of most uh, Christian denominations, you will read things such as the Bible is inerrant, meaning there are no mistakes in it. Uh, you will read the statement of faith of most Christian churches, uh, and you will read that it is the only authoritative or the only authority uh, for all things uh, Christian, etc. The Catholic Church allows itself to form its doctrinal statements from the Bible and from tradition. So therefore, um, although they do use the Bible for their statement of faith, they also use tradition. So you will occasionally find differences. This one is the only version I could find, Catholic or Protestant, that did not mention uh, until after the birth of her firstborn. And by the way, you don't have ever use the word firstborn until you have a second child. I was an only child. I was the firstborn, but there were, were never born after me. So I was born after the First World War, and I was a child in elementary school when the Second World War broke out. World War used to be, it used to be called the First World War used to be called the the, the World War. The war to end all wars uh, until we had the Second World War. Then the World War became the First World War. So you don't have Jesus or anybody being referred to as the firstborn until you have a secondborn. You have, for example, uh, God said his only begotten son. Well, that was... Tweety, <laughs> let me get Tweety. Come here, Tweety, where'd you go? Oh, I guess he's, uh, he's on the ladder. He's going to find his own way up. I usually have them with me on my program that I stream twice on Sunday and once on Wednesday, uh, simulcast it. Uh, and it's called, of course, Creature with Parrots, and I usually have the parrots behind me, so I just didn't take them up when I got ready to. Yep, he's back up there. What's the matter, guys? Huh? You've been up there a long time and it's time to go back into your cage? Well, i got to finish your program and then I'll take you back. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. All right. This version, and it's the only one, says, When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord told him to do, and he took his wife to his home. So she gave birth to a son, and he had not had marital relations with her. Joseph gave him the name of Jesus. So this only speaks of the birth of Jesus. It doesn't speak to any others. One of the things that um, people who think that perhaps uh, Mary did not have other children was the fact that on the cross Mary, uh, Jesus looked at Mary and said, woman your son, then looked at John and said, John this is your mother, take care of her. If Mary had had other children why would he not have referred to one of them the second born for example and said, take care of your mother. Uh, to me, it's very simple. They just were not present. 
John was the only disciple present. Mary was the only family present. Um, most uh, biblical teachers and scholars believe that perhaps Joseph was older, older than Mary and may have passed away. Uh, women usually were married in their early teens, having been promised uh, their father making a contract with the his little girl's uh, future husband. And then at the end of their agreement, he would go off and prepare a place for her. And the father's job was to keep her a virgin. So um, if Jesus was 33, add 14, 15, 16 years to that for Mary's age, um, it is not unlikely that Joseph may have passed away by that time. Just wanted to mention that it came up in our study of the Gospels. Uh, it will come up not so much in Acts about the other children as so much with James. And what about these children? If they are half-brothers or not, whatever their relationship is, what about them? They did not really believe Jesus was Messiah during his lifetime. On one occasion, they disagreed with him and didn't agree with him at all. And as I mentioned before in John, there's an indication where Mary encouraged Jesus to do a more public miracle. She, of course, was a participant of the first one in the wedding feast of Cana when he turned water into wine. She kind of would have liked his ability to perform miracles to be better known by everybody. But when they went to their hometown, Jesus performed very few miracles there. Now, why is that? That's because to Jesus' brethren, be they brothers or cousins, to those that grew up with him, he was the kid down the block. He was the kid they grew up with. It's kind of hard to look at somebody that you played marbles with <laughs> or kicked the can around the block with. I don't know that people still do that. And think of them as any great figure let alone Messiah. Uh, I have an uncle who is now deceased. Uh, uh, one time was the commissioner of baseball for the state of Oklahoma, not professional baseball, but Little League and things like that. But when he was in Texas, he was Little League coach. And one of my cousins was playing on the league he was coaching and another kid the same age. And I can imagine my uncle telling him, don't do it that way, do it this way. Well, it turned out that that little kid grew up to be the 43rd <laughs> president of the United States. Um, we don't know when we see a child what he's going to grow up to be, but we often think of them as children. All right, having said that, uh, I just wanted to get that behind us so that we won't deal with it again when it comes up. And in those days, 
Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, and uh, there were about 120 of them, Men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, spoke by the mouth of David concerning Judas. There had been a prophecy in the Psalms that <clears throat> uh, one would betray Christ and somebody would take his bishopric. So along comes Judas Iscariot. He denies Christ. Now we have the 12 tribes of Israel. We had the um, 12 disciples, but now one has betrayed him. Uh, the names of each one will be on the gate one of the gates of heaven. Will it be the person that they name or will it be the Apostle Paul? Uh, I guess depending on who takes the poll, it could be about two-thirds thinking it should be Apostle Paul, another third thinking, but this is what happened. So Peter thought, well, We've been told to go to Jerusalem and wait for the outpouring of the promise of the Father. You've heard me mention the what and the how. The what being go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person and every language, every nation and every language. And the how is through the power of the Holy Spirit, which has not fallen on them yet. But since they're there, he, being their leader, uh, takes care of business, and it says, It's written in the Psalms, let his habitation be desolate. Let the place where Judas Iscariot winds up be desolate. And his bishopric, let another take. Now, as I said, I'm among those who believe that Peter acted a little bit hastily, but if that's the case, it would have been uh, his character to do that. Peter was the one that says, oh, don't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Oh, well, then give me a bath. <laughs> Peter was the one that said, I'll never de deny you, Lord. I never will. And Jesus said, Peter, you will three times before the rooster crows in the morning. Peter was the one in the Garden of Gethsemane that here comes a soldier with a sword. Peter just off with his ear. A bit um, too sure of himself maybe at times. Uh, but that's Peter. Um, very much a human being like all of us. None of us are perfect. We just have different faults than our neighbor or our cousin. So they decided that they should replace the one who um, uh, has betrayed Christ. And they came up with the qualifications. <clears throat> In verse 21, that whoever they nominate and eventually elect should have been in their company from the whole time, beginning with the baptism of John. That's when John the Baptist baptized Jesus. That whoever they uh, nominated, this was their own, now they are apostles. The word apostles suggests leadership in the church of God. Uh, making decisions for which clear instructions have not been given previously. They decide that that person should be with them since the baptism of John uh, and the greatest is that he be a witness with us of Jesus' resurrection. That is the day when there was no question 
as to James, the brother of Jesus, becoming a believer. Um, they had their opinions, they had their doubts, but there's a extra biblical comment in history about James, Jesus' brother, having said, well, he raises from the dead, come let me know. And that Jesus said, when he rose from the dead, go tell James and the brethren that I have risen from the dead. Being a witness to Jesus before his death and especially after his resurrection, that was primary. Whatever you believed about Jesus before, things changed after the resurrection. Many great leaders have been leaders, have died for their people. Only one has come out of the grave. And they appointed two, Joseph and Matthias. And they prayed uh, and said, Thou, Lord, thou knowest the hearts of all men. Show whether these two have been chosen, that he may take part of the ministry and the apostleship, from which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon uh, Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So it says, but we never hear anything about him again. That's why when in chapter 9 of Acts, Paul becomes a convert and a fellow believer in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit leads them out to the Arabian desert. And to say that an apostle must have been somebody who personally saw Jesus. The apostle Paul's encounter in the Arabian desert with the Lord, in my thinking, is very similar to that of Moses up on the mountain. We can't say that Moses didn't see God. And I think, though we know very little about it, surely the Apostle Paul's experiencing of the risen Lord in the Arabian desert must have been similar. But he was numbered with the 11 apostles. We go to Acts 2, verse 1, and I'm going to end with that. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. When I directed our Bible school choir, in, the, in 1963, 64 year. That year, the choir sang uh, the Hallelujah Chorus quite frequently um, a cappella. We did sing it once in Angela's Temple. And they put me on the platform and they put the choir in, in one of the first balconies. Uh, the organist came up and introduced himself to me and asked me, did I want him to play? And I said, well, it's written in the key of D, but we always sing it a cappella. We do it in C. Can you play it in the key of C? He said, yes. And I'm looking. I don't see an organ. He walks over to a flat spot somewhere. <laughs> And hits a button, and the organ comes up from beneath the floorboards. We also sang another song. 
when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, 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 suddenly. And I'm going to leave you right there. We'll start in our next video, which will be video number four, with X2. And until that next video, and I apologize for the misbehavior of preacher's parents, <laughs> I better change them before I do the next uh, chapter. But until that time, blessings on you.